hello guys this is trinity storm here and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to do second part of what if naruto gain an evolution bloodline if you enjoy this video please like share and subscribe to my channel now wasting no more time let's start the story naruto arose early he left the training grounds for his test after his morning workout and a quick breakfast kid i want you to know that unless your life is in danger i will not assist you you must develop your own strength. Also, even if your life is at stake, I will not provide all solutions. Life or death situations are the best motivators for growth. So, Kit, stay sharp. I'm not going to talk to you unless absolutely necessary. Prepare for your exam now. All right, Kiyubi. Thank you for informing me. Furthermore, I want to win this test on my own merits, not because of a power bestowed upon me. That would make me just as bad as Uchiha, right? I can't rely on someone else to get stronger, even if that someone is a demon king. Now let's get this done. Naruto arrived a little early for his test, so he sat down and napped under a tree. Hanada was located near the training grounds. When she saw her crush sleeping, she blushed and went to wake him up. She couldn't help but blush as she roused him and looked into his eyes. Naruto, on the other hand, simply smiled and blinked at her. Hello, Hanada-chan. How are you doing? Naruto-kun, you're awesome. And you, too? Great. So, are you up for Kuranai Little Sensei's challenge? I, I believe s so. However, I believe it will be h difficult. K Kuranai Sensei is a J Junin. And we. Hey, don't worry, Hanada Chan. We'll learn something whether we win or lose. Aside from that, I have faith in our team. When you put your mind to it, I know you're quite capable. Shino has been hiding his potential, and me. Well, let's just say I've got it covered on my end. Aside from that, I doubt it will be a fighting only challenge. That is not the purpose of our team. We are a scouting team with infiltration elements. WW what exactly do you mean, Naruto-kun? You have your Byakugan, Shino has his bugs, and I have clones and senses to rival Kibas. We're a scouting squad, not a strike squad. But we'll see. What do you mean, Naruto-kun? You couldn't possibly use Bunshins, could you? I couldn't, I couldn't. But the night I graduated, I learned Cage Bunshin, a B rank Kenjutsu. Material clones made of raw chakra that are much more expensive than normal and capable of independent thought. What's cool is that whatever a clone learns, I also learn. It is extremely beneficial to training. Besides, I couldn't make normal clones because I had too much chakra, but Cage Bunshin doesn't have a maximum chakra requirement. It's ideal for me because the more the better. Shino, on the other hand, appears to be close. Let us greet him and prepare. Shino was indeed close, and after a greeting, they prepared for their sensei. Kuranai walked to the training grounds after a short wait. Okay teammate, it is now time to begin your examination. Simply put, you must locate me, retrieve this scroll, and either neutralize or keep me safe. Prepare yourself now. Kuranai simply dissolved into flower petals with these words. Meanwhile, the real Kuranai was watching them and practicing her genjutsu. They were all naturally resistant to it in some way, but all defenses had cracks, and she had discovered theirs. She sent wave after wave of subtle chakra, inducing them into a multi layered genjutsu, softly mouthing her techniques. It was time to see if this team was up to the task. The chakra waves were too subtle for any of the team members to notice. The team blinked a few times before nodding and looking at each other. Okay, she's probably gone now. That was most likely a genjutsu. Would you be so kind as to look for her, Hanada? Hello, Naruto-kun. Hanada activated her dujutsu and began searching for Kuranai with a hand seal in the command, by Akugan. I'm sorry, but I can't locate her. Go menace. 
Don't worry, Hanada Chan, she's a Junin, so finding her shouldn't be too difficult. Hanada could hear a barely audible whisper coming from Shino's direction even as Naruto spoke. Worthless, this simple word that hurt Hanada so much terrified her. What if everyone thought so little of her? After all, she was worthless. She was frail and could never maintain the untouchable demeanor that her Oto sama could. She was frail. Perhaps she should just give up and. Naruto interrupted her thoughts by speaking, if you can't use your eyes, how about your nose? Okay, let's see. Naruto's abilities were enhanced as chakra rushed through his nose. He could smell people who had been there days before, what Shino had for breakfast, and even a couple of his bugs on him and Hanada. Naruto focused by closing his eyes. Following that, he smiled. Hey, she's quite the adventurer. She's very good at concealing her scent. I'm sorry I can't be of much assistance here. Too many scents perplex me. Shino is there anything you can do to help? Shino only nodded once before sending his Kikai scouts out to scout. It was at this point that he heard Naruto's voice whisper, Freak. Shino was tense. Most people assumed the Abarame were emotionless, but they were simply very good at hiding their emotions. They were wearing these coats and glasses to blend in as much as possible with people who couldn't understand them. Shino was depressed after hearing that word, the word that everyone had for him as a child. Those who couldn't understand him used words like freak, abomination, monster, and hate-filled. Shino was fortunate to find something of Kurenai, a strand of her hair to be exact. He nodded as he reluctantly handed it over to Naruto, ignoring his perplexed expression. Kurenai was keeping a close eye on her potential team. So far, so good, she reasoned, but they needed to be more trusting of one another. This test will determine whether or not they have it in them. Naruto sniffed the hair and recognized Kurenai's scent. With a wave, he began following her trail, with the team close behind. He thought he heard a female voice whisper, monster, as he jumped from tree to tree. Naruto almost fell from the tree, thinking that Hanada, the kind and gentle Hanada, would think of him in that way. Then again, so did everyone else. Everyone despised him. No one acknowledged him, comforted him, or cared for him. He moved forward, stealing his heart and doing his best to ignore the pain he was in. Meanwhile, Kiyubi was laughing in his cage. What a fantastic way to put one's skills to use. Maybe taking on an apprentice wasn't such a crazy idea. Naruto nodded to Hanada after closing in on Kurenai's position. Hanada was about to activate her dujutsu when she noticed Naruto's pain in his eyes. The world around her blurred before she could speak. The same goes for Naruto and Shino. Caught in Kurenai's genjutsu, they witnessed their worst nightmare. Naruto had reached a fork in the road. He was just like that when he was a kid. He noticed everyone's stares. Looks of malice and hatred. They despised him. They detested him. He could feel the despair, the black abyss of loneliness rising up to swallow him whole as his loved ones, Anko, Hanada, even Tuchi and Ayame, looked at him with hatred. Demon, demon, they yelled, raising their hands to strike him. Smite him as if he were a demon. Maybe he deserved it. Maybe he was a demon. Something shook Naruto. Determinedly rising up, enveloping, comforting, and strengthening him. Inside, he felt a surge of rage. This was a lie, not the truth. How? Dare she? How dare she use this to break down his resistance? Anger and determination coexisted. He invoked his chakra. Kurenai turned to face her teammates. Hanada was sobbing, Shino was terrified, and Naruto. Naruto appeared so distressed that she nearly shattered her illusion. But then his appearance changed. She felt shivers of fear as she saw so much rage boiling behind his eyes. It was not a good idea to suddenly trap them in that specific genjutsu. She then noticed the chakra swirling around Naruto. How much chakra did he have, Kami? 
it was visible and rapidly rising. He had already molded as much as she had at 100%, and it was still rising. What was he doing? Naruto collected his chakra and directed it to his arms. He cocked his hands back, raising them in front of him. His chakra shifted to his hands palms. The light was so intense. Kuranai could no longer see his hands. The Hyuga would have been blinded. Nami Chakra Naruto pushed his hands forward, releasing a wave of raw chakra. Kuranai felt the world around her tremble for a split second. Her carefully crafted illusions, so delicate yet so powerful. Shattered. No one had ever completely overpowered them before. Even Kakashi couldn't simply shatter them like a massive avalanche, completely destroying anyone in its path. She was. Taken aback. Kami. She murmured. The chakra wave continued for a hundred feet before gradually losing power. Kuranai couldn't help but blink in shock. Hanada and Shino were suddenly released from the Genjutsu when they noticed Naruto with his arms extended forward and Kuranai blinking at him. What surprised them was Naruto's still swirling chakra. Naruto uttered venomous words. How? You're insane. You bitch. How dare you show that to me? How dare you make fun of everything I care about? I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Kuranai barely had time to react as Naruto charged her at speeds that most Junin would struggle to match. She tried to speak to Naruto carefully, apologizing for whatever she had forced him to see. Naruto, relax. It was just a test, an illusion to see. Do you believe I care? It would be insulting to scum to call you scum. How could you possibly show that of all things? Hanada was now officially terrified. What could Naruto have seen to cause such an outburst? What could have compelled such a reaction from someone who seemed so nice and caring? Shino was surprised. Naruto, to his knowledge, was a carefree individual who laughed at the smallest of things. But this Naruto was nothing he expected from the laughing blonde. He turned quickly to Hanada and spoke carefully. We must stop him, Hanada-san. Try to restrain him while I go after Kuranai scroll. Sensei's we'll have to question him about this behavior. I'm not sure if I can help Shino-san, but I'll try. Hanada dashed up to Naruto and used Naruto's enraged state to paralyze a couple of pressure points on his hands. Naruto almost hit her with his other hand before freezing in front of her. Hanada? N. Naruto-kun. I'm not sure what she showed you, but it can't be T that bad, can it? It is. She took me back to my childhood. Kuranai froze when he heard this. No wonder he reacted that way, Kami. Shino, on the other hand, chose to wait until later to question Naruto about his words. He needed to get a scroll now. He returned to his team after quickly swiping it. Kuranai had had enough of seeing. They had the skills and the teamwork. She spoke up quickly. Okay, team, you did an excellent job. You are now the genin of Konoha. You are successful. This test was designed to assess your cooperation and teamwork skills. In other words, whether or not the scroll was obtained was unimportant. Okay. Whatever. Kuranai, I'm not going to work with you. Anko stated that you were understanding of the situation. She obviously misjudged you. Naruto, relax. I had no idea what the illusion had shown you. Do you want to see? Kuranai, would you like to spend a day in my childhood? I'm sure it's not too bad. Naruto, I'm truly sorry. This genjutsu was created to project your worst nightmares and fears. I had no idea it would project that. Hanada cut the conversation short. The Anyo Naruto-kun, why did you react that way? It wasn't like you at all. I suppose so, Hanada. Then again, I'm not like you or anyone else, and I only know about eight other people. Sai asterisk, we need to trust each other because we're going to be team eight. To make that happen, I'll tell you everything about myself. 
By the time I'm done, you'll have earned the right to kill me, and I won't hold it against you. Please take a seat because this will take some time. Hanada and Shino sat under a tree, while Kurinai sat next to them, feeling guilty about what she had Naruto go through. Naruto sat down in another tree, this time facing them. He turned to the sky after looking at each of them in turn before beginning his story. This story began 10,000 years ago, before humans even existed. However, I'm going to skip ahead 13 years. On October 10, 13 years ago. What happened, Hanada? K. Konoha was attacked by T. The K. Kiyubi. Is there anything else? Naruto kun, you were born. She blushed at his attention. Yes. You see, I'm not quite human. But I was born as one. For about 15 minutes, I pretended to be human. Tell me, Shino, what would you do if someone threatened you and everything you care about but you couldn't kill him? The simplest solution would be to confine or seal them. But you can't possibly mean. The Kiyubi. Was. Shino slowed as the implications of Naruto's words dawned on him. Exactly. Yandaimi was unable to kill the Kiyubi. No one can. Instead, he went with another option. He needed to seal it. But, as you can see, that is not so simple. The stronger a biju is, the more tails it has. The ichibi could be sealed in a regular item, while the nibi could be sealed in a specially prepared sphere. However, as one progresses up the tails, it becomes increasingly difficult to seal off. The kiyubi couldn't be contained within an item because the seal would be too weak. It couldn't be sealed in an animal because the animal would become the Kiyubi's submissive personality. It couldn't be sealed in an adult because the Yuki of the Kiyubi would tear the person apart as it overflowed the chakra coils. So there was only one option. Insert the biju into a newborn baby. And I was the only baby born that day. I am Naruto Uzumaki, and I am not human. Jinchuriki is my classification. To be precise, the Kiyubi no Jinchuriki. In my stomach is the demon who attempted to destroy Konoha. Naruto gave them some time to reflect on his words, allowing it all to sink in. Hanada was terrified, and Shino was as usual unreadable. No human, no matter how powerful, could devise a seal to keep the Kiyubi at bay. Yandaimi survived because he used all of his chakra. He died as a result of summoning the one thing capable of sealing off the Kiyubi. He himself summoned the Shinigami. That is the true cause of his death. But, just before he died, he left behind his final words. Please accept my name in one request. That I be regarded as a hero for restraining the Kiyubi. The only thing standing between the Kiyubi and the rest of you. He had faith in the people he was attempting to protect. They never listened to the fool. They perceived me to be the Kiyubi itself. You were curious as to why I reacted so strongly to seeing my memories? Tell me how many times you've scavenged garbage for food. How many times have you been tortured until you were unconscious? How often have you been poisoned? How many times have you been met with hatred, as if your very existence was a blight on the earth? Hanada appeared terrified. What kind of people would treat someone like that? How could they torture one person in order to save them all? Shino, for one, saw someone he could relate to despite the fact that he was not a member of his clan. Kurinai began to realize what she had done and felt guilt unlike anything she had ever felt before. However, Naruto continued. There are others. Five years ago. Remember a chakra burst so terrifying you probably had nightmares about it? That's me. Kiyubi, to be exact. A gang pursued me five years ago. They gave me a weekly chase. They caught me on one of the few occasions. I was extremely fortunate. I was tortured for only an hour. Then a chakra-infused sword stabbed me. Exactly on the seal. Psi asterisk, the seal is both powerful and delicate. The smallest disruption could set the Kiyubi free. That's exactly what happened. The Kiyubi's seal had been broken. 
The Kiyubi could, and probably should, have escaped, killing me in the process. But killing me would be too nice for Kiyubi. He chose to devour my soul instead. He challenged me and took me to my mindscape. There is no way out of such fights. How would you react if you saw the Kiyubi, a dead demon, and realized he was the source of all your pain? Tell me? How would you feel if the one person you've ever completely trusted never told you anything about yourself? I battled the Kiyubi. I would have died normally. But Kiyubi made a mistake. We were in my mental landscape. Whatever I say is accepted. I am God there. So I fought him. And beat him. Yandaimi was also present. Or rather, he implanted a clone of himself in order to repair the seal if it ever broke. He revealed a few details to me, including my parentage, but that is irrelevant. The point is that I defeated Kiyubi. Victory in such a fight means that the winner completely devours and absorbs the loser's powers. As a result, I began to absorb Kiyubi's power and knowledge. Is there a problem here? His power was unfathomable. His knowledge was excessive. I would mentally and physically tear myself apart. So. I returned Kiyubi. Gasps rang out. There was simply no other option. I had to. I drew him back and bound him to my blood. I also changed him, erasing his bloodlust and transforming him into a sort of Keke Jenke. Kiyubi will be the mentor and teacher to all of my children. He will lead them in a life of kindness. Kiyubi is now a grumpier version of Aruka Sensei. Oh, and he despises cute things. Chuckle. His team was staring at him with wide eyes. But that wasn't all. While I was absorbing his power, the majority of it escaped and incinerated the men who were attacking me. The Kiyubi's chakra, you see, is poisonous. I did, however, develop a resistance over time. It enabled me to survive, albeit not as I was. I grew even less human. My body is shaky. My DNA is partially broken. However, I have control over it. I can make my body mutate and change form in order to create weapons or alter my perception. I can grow claws, wings, feel warmth, and transform my eyes into those of an eagle. My body adapts faster than any other person's. My bones are denser, my skin is more difficult to penetrate, my muscles evolve a hundred times faster than anyone else's, and I can heal almost any injury. In short, my body's physical abilities are as close to perfect as a human can be. Tell me. What makes a monster? Birth? Looks? Fame? Actions? Thoughts? What exactly is a monster? Naruto waited for his teammates' approval, his pain visible in his eyes. It was the hour of reckoning. They would pass judgment on him. Hanada felt torn. Many members of her family had died in the Kiyubi attack. The Kiyubi had come to life in front of her. She was taught that it was evil and that it was no longer alive. But it wasn't completely dead. It was all a lie. Was it also a lie to be evil? Would she defy her family? Her devotion to it had been drilled into her head her entire life. Above all, Hyuga. Nonetheless, she was hesitant. Naruto never asked for it, and he had no choice. They'd all been killed if he was the Kiyubi. He was the only thing that stood between them and the demon lord. She tried for a split second to imagine his loneliness. It was unthinkable. Unbearable. She made her decision. Shino also tried to recall Naruto. His logic suggested that he was a risk, but an acceptable one. They'd all been killed if he'd been the Kiyubi. But they were still alive. So, if the person in front of him was still kind after all of this, it meant he was immune to Kiyubi's hatred. Shino also considered Naruto's loneliness. It was even more difficult for him. A life without his clan, his insects, or anyone. It frightened him. He was terrified. 
there was no one to turn to or look up to. He also made a decision. Kuranai had made her decision a long time ago. It was the most obvious choice. Naruto's teammates spoke slowly. N. Naruto kun is not a demonic being. You didn't request it. You kept a all of us safe. I don't believe you're an M monster. You're T too nice for it. I agree with Hinata san. It would be impossible to maintain a charade of innocence for as long as you appear to have gone through. Apart from that, if anyone understands your position in Konoha, it is my clan. Naruto was overjoyed. He could finally entrust his final secret to two more people who didn't see him as the damn fox. I heard that brat. Mina, thank you for accepting me as I am. However, I have not revealed my final and most important secret. Kuranai and her colleagues perked up. What was he on about? What was more important than the Kiyubi being sealed inside him? Three people in Konoha, including myself, are aware of this secret. You will not reveal this SS level secret to anyone. What is the first rule of being a Hokage, Shino? Shino automatically responded. Don't send others on missions that you wouldn't go on yourself. What does that mean? Yup. Consider this. Would Yandaimi ever entrust that responsibility to any random child? Kuranai's pupils dilated as she caught up. That means you're. Hey, Hanada chan you know more than anyone. What do I resemble? Here's a tip. You see him on a daily basis. Hanada was deep in thought when the answer hit her on the head. Naruto resembled the Yandaimi's face on the Hokage monument. It seemed impossible, but it was true. N. Naruto kun is. Yandaimi sama's. Son. Was all she could say before collapsing. Naruto laughed. She was so adorable like that. Kuranai and Shino, I don't think I need to tell you this, but you will not tell anyone about what happened here. Not even my ancestry. They don't deserve my father's legacy if they don't treat me well, even if I'm an orphan. Shino gave a nod. Kuranai made the effort to apologize to Naruto. Naruto I'd like to apologize. I had no idea what I would have shown you. If I had, I would have gone with something else. No, you did not. However, this does not absolve you of your actions. Kuranai-san. I don't forget or forgive easily. But, in case you're wondering, I'm fine. I've been through a lot worse. It'll just take some time. Hanada awoke after a short time. After being told not to repeat anything she heard there, the team exchanged secrets in order to strengthen their bond even further. Hanada had fallen for the second time at that point. She'd finally worked up the courage to tell Naruto she liked him, only to be surprised by his response. Hanada chan is already familiar to me. I like you as well. Despite the fact that, as an orphan, I'm not sure in what way. Still, I like you, and that's one of the reasons I'm on this team. The team debated a name while waiting for Hanada to awaken from Happy Land. Naruto arrived at their final decision. The team's name would be Fear. Alternatively, first encounter Assault Rakan. They will be the first to be sent in to recon the enemy's positions and possibly attack them using strategic thinking and knowledge rather than pure firepower. Because it was getting late, the team meeting was adjourned so that everyone could go home. It was a good day for Naruto. Kuranai went to see the Hokage and was chastised for being late. Her words, however, shook the poor Hokage. I'm running late because I attended my first team meeting. Naruto also revealed all of his secrets to me. And I mean everyone. This includes his parentage. Hokage, you're a jerk. In your old age, you've completely forgotten who you are. Of course, the assembled Junin let out gasps, which were quickly silenced when they heard their Hokage. I. C. I'm afraid I can only apologize. That's not going to work, 
Hokage sama. I used Genjutsu to force Naruto to see his worst nightmare. He almost killed me without even using his abilities. I'll tell you what he said, I don't forgive or forget easily. Her words seemed to age Serutobi in a matter of seconds. He sighed and dismissed everyone. When he looked into his crystal ball, he saw Naruto being chased out of a shop. Have I really let you down that much, Naruto? Minato? Have I really let you down so badly? As if on cue, Naruto turned and stared directly at the crystal, I. The aged Hokage's response came from the look in his eyes. The next day, Naruto was waiting for Team 8 at their training grounds. He appeared exhausted when he arrived. What's the matter, Naruto? Did you get any sleep last night? Inquired a worried Kurenai, Hanada too shy to speak and Shino silently nodding. Yes, sort of. Q and I had a long conversation. You see, he wants to teach you his brand of Genjutsu. You were mentioned as having potential. We were also putting together training schedules. I am the most advanced physically, but I doubt you will be able to keep up with me. We also discussed our areas of expertise. To cut a long story short, I was in my mindscape discussing things while my body slept. Yawn asterisk, please accept my apologies. Anyway, Q and I talked about how I could get him out here. I do have the Kitsune contract, but he's inside me and I can't easily summon him. Sure, if I use his Yuki, I might be able to, but I'm not sure what it'll do to my body, and I doubt it'll be pleasant. All I could think about was creating a soulless cage bunchen and stuffing him inside it. Still, I'd need to speak with you before proceeding. After all, you are our sensei. I see. So, Naruto, how about you share your thoughts with us? And for the time being, keep Kiyubi inside. What about your mental landscape? First and foremost. Q said your genjutsu was amazing, but he didn't say how. He suggested I ask you about it. He also said he'd try to teach you kitsune illusions, which, from what I've heard, are so powerful that they can actually cause physical wounds on their target. That, and they're extremely difficult to get rid of. My chakra nami, for example, would not work on such an illusion. On the downside, they require a lot more chakra to cast. I see. Well, I'd like to learn how to use them, but that's not the point of this discussion. What else did you discuss? After that, we talked about our training. Because of my reserves and physical training, I am a pretty good all-around shinobi, except for genjutsu. He stated that while we should specialize in something, we should also be proficient in a few other areas, and I agree. Shino, he said, would be good with a pair of kama, while Hinata should learn genjutsu, how to use tanfa or another ranged weapon, and possibly some medical jutsu. He said he'd try to teach you some taijutsu once he got out of the seal for you, sensei. He also had some good ideas about me and Hinata working together. He stated that, whereas my style focuses on counters and evasion, combined with aggressive footing, Hinata's is the polar opposite. Hinata Chan your natural fighting style is to avoid an attack and counter immediately, fooling your opponent into thinking you're at a disadvantage because you're on the defensive. Shino stated that you and your Kikai Chu pretty much cover each other, so you could use them to warn you of danger, similar to having a sixth sense about danger. Naruto observation sans are correct. I'm curious, though, what he meant by specializations, given that his previous statements all but contradicted that point. Naruto responded after Kiyubi spent some time explaining what Shino had said to him, because, like it or not, nearly all shinobi are obsessed with something. For example, I am proficient in taijutsu, ninjutsu, and have begun learning fuin jtsu, but I intend to specialize in taijutsu. Even if you learn kama, you will concentrate on your bug jutsu. It's just something to rely on. Anyway. Kiyubi stated that my specialties will most likely be reckoning, close quarters combat, and seals. Shino represents calculation, strategy, and long-range attack. 
Hanada specializes in reckoning, support, and close quarters combat. Kuranai Sensei possesses both Genjutsu and Ninjutsu. This way, we covered all of our bases. N. Naruto kun, what did you mean about your mindscape? The mindscape is an image of your mind. It takes a lot of meditation to get inside, but once there, you realize a few things about yourself. It is, however, risky. What do you mean, Aanyo? All of your memories, dreams, and nightmares are contained within your mindscape. If you are not cautious and have had a bad life, you may become traumatized. It's also where my and Kiyubi's consciousnesses can collide. Because of the beatings I had received, my room used to be a dark, damp sewer. In my case, it represented my lack of confidence and pervasive sadness. It's now a massive lush forest with a lake and a small cave that hides my nightmares. A word of caution. If you ever gain access, never enter the cave. You'll be forced to live my life, and I'm still not sure how I didn't go insane after everything I went through. Okay. Naruto, let's get started on the training regimen. What were your plans? Q and I started brainstorming an upgradable obstacle course. So we decided to train our bodies in the morning and then go on a mission or two. Following that, I recommend chakra control and jutsu training. In terms of training, Hanada will be my partner, no offense Shino. There were none taken. It appears to be a good plan. I'm curious about the training you'll receive. Since both myself and Hanada Chan are close quarters combatants, I was considering joint taijutsu training. We'll be able to cover for each other this way. Hanada Chan is naturally flexible, and my Keke Jenke allows me to be as well. I believe we can fight literally within each other's embrace. We'll be able to predict what the other person will do if we train enough. We could be the most dangerous couple in Konoha. Hanada almost burst out laughing at the prospect of training alone with the crush, interrupting Naruto's speech. In a fighting style, they'd be touching almost all the time. When Naruto noticed it, he rushed to help her, oh, Hanada-chan. Even though I admit that your constant blushing and stuttering add to your natural beauty by making you appear cute and innocent, there is a limit. If you want to stay in this squad, you must act the part. I can't fight alongside an ally I don't trust not to faint from shyness. Hanada Chan, calm down right now. Otherwise, I'll have to leave. Naruto despised shouting at her, but there was no other option. Well done, Kit. You've finally broken her. And here I thought you were with the good guys tisk 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 tisk. Oh, Furball, shut up. You and I both know she has to get out of here. Meanwhile, Hanada was attempting to shake the stupor caused by Naruto's harsh words. She was on the verge of sobbing before. Look at me, Hanada chan. I exclaimed, Look at me. I know you have a crush on me and that your family has ruined your self esteem. You think you're weak and everything. But you know what? You are the only person in our age group who has a realistic chance of beating me. Trust me when I say that not even Neji Baka has your potential. It's just that you put yourself in a box. I want to assist you, but first you must overcome your lack of confidence. Now stand up and look me in the eyes. Hanada, tell me what you see. Hanada rose slowly and looked at her crush. She could tell he cared about her. She was getting worse by the second. She had enraged Naruto kun. I'm so sorry, Naruto kun. I'm so w worthless that I should just q quit. Sob asterisk, I am made you mad at me. I I think I should just l leave. Naruto sighed in frustration as Hanada turned around. What would it take for her to overcome herself? He took off his shirt and formed his wings after making up his mind. He rushed forward, grabbed her bridal style, and bolted. Hanada eeped before shrieking in terror. Naruto ignored her screams as he flew higher and higher. Hanada I didn't get upset with you. I didn't yell at you, either. I tried to shock you a little so you could get over it eventually. 
This appears to be the only way to overcome your shyness and fear. Naruto dove with Hanada screaming. He spread his wings at the last second, gaining speed. For Hanada, this was the wildest ride she'd ever been on, and it was at the hands of her crush. Her screams of fear turned into screams of exhilaration as the adrenaline kicked in. Hanada was having fun for the first time in Kami knows how long. She enjoyed every second of her ride, despite her shyness and fear. Hanada pouted when Naruto finally touched down. It was pleasant. Then she caught sight of Naruto's smug grin. You seem to have moved on from that, eh? How about we go back now? Here's some advice from Q himself. You're only as strong as you want to be. You will lose the moment you lose your confidence. Whatever others say, the only person who can judge your worth is you. This way, even if you lose, you will never fail. Remember, Hanada chan I believe in you and entrust my life to you. So what if others dismiss you as ineffective? Prove them incorrect. Everything is in the palm of your hand. Needless to say, Naruto's words boosted Hanada's confidence. They both returned to their team in hushed tones. Shino raised an eyebrow, noticing Hanada's increased confidence, while Kurinai took Hanada to the side to ask her what had happened. After that, the team got down to fixing the schedule, with Hanada blushing at how close she'd have to be to Naruto and Naruto chuckling at her expense, which got Kurinai bopping him on the head. Shino, for his part, remained mostly silent but appeared to be unwinding around his team. Naruto's laughter and jokes made him feel more at ease than he had felt outside his home in a long time. Naruto eventually inquired about Kurinai's test. She explained to her team that because she knew they were immune to genjutsu, she had to create special versions to confuse them. First and foremost, the Kurinai who spoke to them was a genjutsu combined with a cage bunshin. The voices they claimed to have heard from their teammates were also genjutsu she used to counter Hanada's gaze. After all, no matter how powerful the Byakugan was, it couldn't detect a sound illusion. Her final genjutsu was one that projected the subject's deepest fears, such as Naruto's childhood or Hanada's fear of rejection. Fortunately, no one asked Shino what his deepest fear was, because whatever could scare the ice-cold bug user had to be the stuff of nightmares. After completing his obstacle course that was difficult enough to challenge Kurinai, Naruto began to grow bored. Sure, his training with Hanada was fantastic. They worked together so well that they could take down Anko. Hanada had begun learning medical jutsu, which, when combined with her already impressive knowledge of medicine, revealed her exceptional potential as a medic nin. Kurinai's ex-part sensei Narashibi had given Shino several books on strategy. He had also begun some lessons in using commas, frequently sparring with Naruto because Naruto healed any injuries in seconds and had a lot of stamina. Kurinai, for her part, dedicated a significant amount of time to her team in Naruto's rather. Unusual training regimen, meditating long enough to enter her mindscape for example or focusing and condensing her chakra enough to have it take the shape of certain more and more complicated kanji. Naruto studied seal making and elemental chakra control with his cage bunshins. His primary affinity may be wind, but that doesn't mean he can't learn other things, right? For practice, he'd used some of his seals to make Shino's weapons much sharper and sturdier than usual. He also put some seals on Anko's bracers, allowing her to draw a pair of long knives, which she improved with seals. After a week, the team decided that Naruto would be the team leader. It was time for the team leader to request a higher ranking mission. Naruto spoke as he approached Sandame. With all due respect, Hokage-sama, I believe it is time for my team to be assigned to a higher level mission. We have completed the requirements for a C rank mission, and our Junin sensei, Yuhi Kuranai, believes that our skills qualify for a simple C rank mission that focuses on our strengths. As a result, I believe I speak for my team when I say that we want a more difficult mission. Explain to me, Jenin Uzumaki, why I should listen to a mere Jenin fresh out of the academy. 
Is it possible for me to not know who I should entrust a mission to? Or do you believe that your infinite experience allows you to know more than your superiors? Hokage-sama is straightforward. We are the shinobi. We are shinobi, whether we are young or old, fresh or battle-hardened. While keeping us in D-rank missions serves a purpose for most genin, it does not serve the same purpose for us. First and foremost, as shinobi, we are people of action, doomed to face adversity. Staying here, safe and secure, trapped in normalcy, dulls our abilities, which is unacceptable. True, we require security and shelter, but we also require the opportunity to get out and sharpen our skills, which is impossible in the village. I'd also like to draw your attention to the mission of my squad. We are the tally keepers. How will we do our jobs later if we don't know how the world outside works first? Not knowing even the smallest detail could jeopardize our mission and, by extension, the mission of another squad. Going out of the village at our young age, in simple missions, and possibly cooperating with other older and more experienced squads, can be extremely beneficial. We'll know what to expect later on, and we might even make contacts outside of this village. I'm not asking for a solo or a C rank for our team. Instead, I'd like us to do our jobs while also planning for another team in a joint mission. So, Naruto-kun I see your argumentative skills haven't waned. Good. So, I'm sending a team out to retrieve an item. Perhaps your team would like to accompany them? That is, if you are prepared. They'll be gone in 30 minutes. Naruto turned to face the aged Hokage after nodding to his team. Hello, Sandame-sama. We'll meet them there. While my team and I prepare, prepare our mission scroll. I'll return for it because I can catch up to my team the quickest. Excellent. Team 8. You've been assigned a C-rank mission to T-Country. Your mission is to calculate the value of a stolen item in the home of a wealthy merchant. Once found, you must provide the results to the other team that will perform the extraction. Your pay will be determined by your performance. Best wishes. Naruto and his team departed with a curt nod. After learning the Shunshin no Jutsu, they went to their respective rooms and took their traveling scrolls. They shunshined to the gate to await their allied team after saying their goodbyes to their respective families. Soon after, a team of three chunin appeared. Naruto deftly landed in front of them just as they were about to ask what was going on. Greetings. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, the Taicho of Team 8, also known as Team Feaar we are your tally keepers. Hayuga Hanada to my right is a Reckon and Close Quarters Specialist, while I am a Reckon, Support, and Secondary Close Quarters Specialist. Aburame Shino, our Strategist, Reckoner, and Long-Term Specialist, is to my left. Yuhi Kuranai, our Junin Sensei and Genjutsu and Long Range Specialist, is standing behind us. Here is our mission description. I'm excited to be working with you. Pipe. The Chunin blinked at the team in front of them. Short and to the point introduction, on time and covering all bases. They simply had to have the damned demon brat. Naruto sighed as he sensed their discomfort. Acceptance would take a long time. After the introductions, the teams moved quickly through the forest using chakra-enhanced leaps. The teams traveled for two days to their destination. The Chunin team mostly ignored Naruto and his team for the first two days, but by the third day, they were starting to feel more comfortable around them. There were no signs of demonic control, and his team worked like a well-oiled machine, setting perimeters and guards every now and then, with cage bunchons covering their tracks. The two teams had completed their goal, a massive four-story high mansion, by the evening of the final day. It was finally time. Naruto agreed to join the Junin team in order to stay put while they did their job. Hanada used her Byakugan to search the house for chakra sources. Meanwhile, Shino unleashed a unique breed of bugs capable of transmitting images to him in the form of a short video. Naruto activated his wings after warning the Chunin team about his unique Keke Jenke. The team was taken aback by his appearance. Daijobu, Ma. 
It's simply my keke jenke. I got it the day the kiyubi was about to break free. The damned furball wanted to mess with my body so it could escape in it. I was able to beat it thanks to Yandaimi's secondary seals. The remains of its yukai gave me the ability to change my form slightly. Yes, it's nothing spectacular, but it's extremely useful. Don't be concerned. Sandame Sama, Jiraiya Sama, and Yamanaka Inoichi Sama have all confirmed that the Kiyubi is still safely sealed inside my gut. And, yes, my team is aware of it, and they are fine with it. Now, please allow me to complete my task. Naruto then shot up into the night, circling the building and scanning it with his special vision modes, leaving a group of stunned shinobi in his wake. Team 8 was approached by the Chunin leader. Are you okay with having the Kiyubi's vessel on your team? I mean, the Kiyubi could have seized control and... Hanada's unusually cold glare cut the Chunin short. Naruto is not the fox. As you put it, he is its vessel. Furthermore, if the Kiyubi couldn't take over Naruto when he was tortured to the point of considering death a blessing, how could he now take over Naruto-kun? He never gave up protecting him, even when the idiotic villagers tried to murder him and make his life a living hell. If he wanted us dead, we'd be dead by now, and you know it. Hate the Kiyubi's past actions, but know that Naruto-kun will never be like that. He has a goal that is more important to him than anything else, he wants to be accepted by this village. So keep quiet and have faith in him. The Chunin looked surprised at her. Hayuga Hanada was supposed to be weak and timid, but this Hanada proved otherwise. They looked curiously at Shino. I agree with Hanada-san. Naruto is far too gentle and caring to be affected by the Kiyubi. Kuranai couldn't be happier with her team. They were on track to completely transform the world. Naruto appeared in front of the team a few minutes later. The teams turned to Shino after revealing and cross-referencing their findings. After all, he was the strategist. He outlined his strategy after a few moments of thought. The defense appears to be weak, and we already know what their weak points are. Team A will enter from the north, through the storeroom. Kuranai Sensei will use Genjutsu to protect them. Meanwhile, Naruto and Hanada will be stationed at the mansion's exit, ensuring that if the guards are alerted and there. Termination is deemed necessary, there will be no escape for them, allowing the leaf to remain free of charges. I'll remain at the extraction point to keep it safe. The teams reached an agreement and went about their business. Kuranai's Genjutsu skills kept the guards in the dark about the shinobi. After only three hours, the two groups were well on their way back to Konoha. After hearing about Team 8's success, Serutobi rewarded them with a Rank B mission in recognition of the risks they took as well as their attention to every potential action. Naruto went up to the Hokage after the mission and requested a more advanced sealing book, as he had already completed the ones he had previously obtained. The third delighted in handing him a few books with more advanced seals. Naruto was quickly becoming a seal master for his age. He may have lacked experience, but he was clearly talented in the field. He gave the team a couple of days off to enjoy themselves, making a mental note to ask Jiraiya for some more books the next time he was in Konoha. Their day was going well until Team 7 showed up for lunch at Ichiraku's ramen stand. Sasuke scowled at Naruto before challenging him to a fight. If it's not Team Dobi, I'm not sure what is. What exactly are you doing here? Are you recovering from too much thinking? Naruto, who was always quick to put the Uchiha brat in his place, glared. No Teme. We're just having a good time. Or have you forgotten that there is fun to be had outside of your Yuke's happy hour? Asshole, buzz off now. The insult infuriated Sasuke. Dobi. Stand up and back up your words. Nobody ever gets away with insulting Uchiha. If I didn't have to touch you, Uchiha, I would. Or if I had any reservations about who would win the fight. HN. Do you realize you'll never beat me, Dobi? You, 
on the other hand, are a jerk. I don't want to fight you because I'm confident I'd win. Fighting an enemy with no chance of victory is pointless. Do you remember what you said, Dobie? Get up and demonstrate. Of course, Sakura jumped to defend her crush. Naruto Baka, yes. Get up and fight Sasuke kun, or remain silent like the Baka that you are. Naruto scratched his ears. Oh, the pink banshee. Haruno, what do you want? Do you not have a wall to smash with your brow? Jeez. Sakura was sputtering in response to Naruto's insult. He'd never insulted her as much as he was now. And it bothered her for some reason. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on who you were, Sasuke rushed to defend her pride. Dobi, get up and fight me. Or are you going to hide behind that pale-eyed babe? As chopsticks landed on the counter, time stood still. Both Shino and Hanada looked at each other and said, Idiot. Naruto slowly stood up and turned to face the Uchiha. Meanwhile, Kiyubi demanded the brat's blood for insulting Naruto's mate. Please. Return. It. What? You want to fight for that jerk sake? You must be dumber than I thought. You don't stand a chance against me. I am an elite Uchiha, and you are a useless, worthless son of a. Naruto literally exploded forth in a burst of speed, sending a palm strike in Sasuke's sternum, knocking the wind out of him, putting an end to Sasuke's tirade. He then vanished and reappeared behind him, smashing his elbow against Sasuke's ribcage, making a cracking sound. As Sasuke charged forward again, Naruto waited for him and punched him in the face, knocking him down. Sasuke twitched on the ground, attempting to rise. He couldn't make a coherent motion because he was bleeding from his nose and lips, had a busted brow and a shattered jaw, and the right half of his ribcage was almost entirely broken to pieces. Sakura stood there in horror. Hanada and Shino exhaled deeply. It would undoubtedly leave an impression. Kiba burst out laughing. Naruto marched over to the sprawled form of Uchiha and scowled at him. Uchiha, you are as weak as the rest of your clan. You lack a driving force to propel you through everything, and as a result, you lose to me. You are not filth. You're even worse than scum. Throughout the agony, Sasuke's mind was preoccupied with one thought. I need to get stronger if I'm going to beat him. I need to strengthen myself. I must hate more. More venom. Much more hate. Sasuke's mind was as shattered as his body. Naruto summoned some medics. Meanwhile, Sakura began yelling at him for injuring her Sasuke kun, claiming that he was a monster and that she would report him to the council. Hanada paused in mid sentence. Sakura, that would be stupid. Sasuke threatened and challenged Naruto to a duel, which he lost. That is something that the shop's owners, three clan heirs, and their cans will support. Because Sasuke and Naruto are not civilians, they will be tried only by the Shinobi Council. In other words, your mother and the civilians will be powerless to intervene. So get your useless humanoid excuse and get out. Kiba stared wide-eyed at Hanada's words, while Sakura retaliated with a barrage of insults and accusations that made no sense, despite the fact that one could easily hear the words, pale-eyed bitch, demon, monster-loving, blue-haired slut, and a number of other insults. The Anbu finally had enough of her and chopped the back of her neck, knocking her out. Naruto apologized and asked them to keep it quiet. Kiba and Team 8 went to their training ground to have some fun after the Anbu left. After Uchiha was released from the hospital, he attempted to press charges against Naruto. Even Danzo, Homura, and Kaharu couldn't help him without the civilian council's support. Especially after the head of the Hyuga clan, Hiyashi, made it clear that whoever wanted to condemn the boy who defended his child's honor would have to go through him first. It was an unnecessary threat, however, because the majority of the Shinobi Council already supported Naruto. Naruto then requested another C-rank mission, this time to assist Team Guy in taking out a bandit group in Mizu no Kuni. Everything was fine until the fight began. Naruto and Hanada were paired up against the group's leaders, 
while Lee and Neji took down the bulk of the strays with their extreme speed. Shino and Tenten sprayed individual attacks on the bandits behind them, keeping Lee and Neji safe. Guy and Kuranai watched from behind, ready to intervene. It was soon discovered that the group was led by a pair of shinobi. A couple well known for their use of poison. The man used a ninjutsu and mostly taijutsu to engage in close combat, whereas his wife used senbon and wide area poison jutsu to weaken the enemy. She also had a ninjutsu that she used occasionally, but she wasn't nearly as good as her husband. While Naruto was fighting the man, Hinata was fighting the woman, using her own senbon needles to hit her nerve points and closing in whenever she could. It was going well until the nuke nin pair both attacked Hanada in a flash, taking her by surprise. There was a sound of flesh being ripped before she could react. As a pair of blades protruded from Naruto's back, blood sprayed on Hanada's face. He'd saved her at the expense of himself. Hanada began to cry until she heard a growl. I. Will not. Allow you. I. Will not allow you to hurt her. Naruto formed his claws and attacked with a primal roar. The pair assumed he was weakened by their poisons, as well as a pair of swords passing through him. Instead, they received a clawed hand in the stomach. Naruto pushed his claws upwards with a grunt, effectively impaling them. His hands had entered the couple's stomach region, four claws protruding from their shoulders, and the fifth claw, the middle finger, stabbed into their brain. Naruto tossed them aside and knelt on his knees. He had never encountered this poison before, and his wounds had weakened him. Hanada rushed over to him and began to heal him with her tears. It didn't take him long to get to his feet. Neji spoke about how fate had decreed that he would live, only to be slapped by his ostensibly weak cousin, who tried to explain to him that Naruto was alive because he wanted to and never gave up, not because fate decreed it. Of course, Neji did not listen, and Naruto was too annoyed by Neji to try to persuade him otherwise. They eventually left in relative peace and returned to Konoha. Since Lee and Guy would never stop talking about Naruto's flames of youth. Team 7 was leaving on a C-rank mission to accompany Tazuna to the Land of Waves as the team arrived. When Sasuke and Sakura tried to confront Naruto, he simply shrugged and said they were returning from a B-rank mission and an encounter with shinobi, not mere bandits. Kuranai followed her team inside the village, ignoring Kakashi's wide eyes and making fun of Sasuke and Sakura's expressions. That's it for today. If you enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.